Oh, yeah. Oh, warning. Zero style is known to cause gas or gear acquisition syndrome. Prolonged exposure to me and my vlog may cause you to buy knives, flashlights, patches, pouches, pocket trash, and other EDC junk you may or may not need. You've been warned. Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero, here to show you a little bit of red EDC gear this week. I've got some sweet pocket trash, knives, patches, ready to go, all in the red color scheme. Are you ready for some red? Are you red ready? Are you ready for red? I hope you're ready to see some red gear, because you're about to get put on red while I red red this red, red, red. Red. This week's red theme pouch dump selection coming at you with the smaller ZF cup size A in ripstop nylon. On the back side, we've got our patches from Castle Grayscale, the Famicom controller. Looking a little dirty because I use my stuff and it's been in my pocket and I wear black pants. The brand new Data Crew Pocket Check Yourself patch. This really cool futuristic cyberpunk action from Phytonics the OG Spitfire Shred, and from Antiquated EDC, the Devil, from Cuphead. Rounding off our Red Gamer Nerd Aesthetic Pouch. The zipper pocket goes all the way around and opens up clamshell, giving you access to all the gear that you've got. I like to use one side dedicated to cards. You can keep five or so cards in here. I like a debit card and an ID in mine. You can use this top back pocket or the half if you want to split your cards up, you want to have cash in one side, cards in another, however you want to roll that out. On this side we've got vertical split divided pockets. I like to keep a flashlight in one and my knife in the back. On the back side I've got a new knife this week. You wondering if I cut myself? No, I did not cut myself with this new knife. Cut myself on some plastic. So this is a knife I've been looking at for a while. This is the Best Tech Tulip. It's an O-Stop Hell designed knife. This is the Cherry Red G10 edition. Check out the sweet action on these scales. Very nice milling pattern, giving it some cool texture. There was a pocket clip right here by this back screw. I've removed it. It also had a back spacer that went all the way here behind this backstop, all the way around the bottom, and I just straight up removed that so I was able to put a lanyard bead right here on this back post perfectly. Speaking of, this is a JRW Gear Curator bead in Turbo Glow. Very cool little bead. It's the closest to red that I had. So, now that I've modded this knife, I really like it. Little front flick action here. You can see that my knife is dirty. You can see my knife is dirty because I use my stuff. There we go. Nice little Kirudashi style front flipper blade here. I really love the shape of this grind. This is the perfect knife for doing piercing cuts like this. I'm going to use this as a craft knife. It is awesome. It's a liner lock. It is on bearings, but the bearings are very stiff. Factory, I don't think they were lubed at all, to be completely honest with you. This thing was bone dry when I got it. I had to take the whole thing apart just to be able to get this thing to have any kind of good action at all. Now, that being said, it didn't take much. A little bit of KPL right there on the bearings, and we were good to go. This knife without a clip on it has much better ergos now. Put a bead on the back and you can get a nice four-finger grip on it. Absolutely ambidextrous if you're cool with using a liner lock left-handed. It's a little weird. But yeah, the front flipper action on this is really great. The design on this knife is super cool. It's a very small little knife. It's thin in profile as well as thin in height. If you don't put a lanyard bead on it like I did, it's even smaller. Now, grips on this thing are interesting. Finger on the top of the front flipper and just flip it back. But you'll often get your finger in the way when you front flick like that. My friend, a box of sharp objects. Shout out to you for teaching me the mastery of the front finger flick. This is the move right here. Pinch with the lanyard bead right on the back so you got that extra grip. These fingers are kind of not really doing that much, honestly. This right here, this meat of your finger right on there and the blade perfectly locks up. Finger out of the way. You can do it cat paw style like this too. Metal complex. You gotta have it turned out like this, or you will stab yourself in the palm. I don't think that that is a supernatural way to open this knife. The Tulip from Best Tech 
it's a nice little G10 knife. There is a liner lock version that is titanium, but it kind of only came in like a pink colorway, and it didn't match the red aesthetic that I wanted for this video. So here we are. I've been wanting this knife for a long time, and I finally got it. The Best Tech Tulip with the JRW Gear Curator Bead. This week's red theme knife. This is my Roy Vivon A9CU Copper Flashlight with the Plague and JRW Gear Curator Skull Lanyard Bead action on the back here. I forced this patina on this flashlight myself. They didn't actually patina on their own, but I wanted to speed the process up with a little liver of sulfur. Link up here if you want to watch that. Got a little cover here on the only exterior micro USB port. This allows it to be a little bit more waterproof if you drop it in a puddle or it gets wet or something like that. Single button action on this flashlight. The UI is nice and simple. Double tap it will turn it on. You can leave it on. Individual taps step up the brightness up and down. Long press it to turn it off again. Hold the button in, it just jumps right to turbo, let go, and it immediately releases. I use momentary turbo, the absolute most with this flashlight. It's perfect. Great little USB flashlight, the size of a AAA battery. Fits perfectly into your pouch, just like that. So, on to pocket trash for this week. Yeah, your Ultra Nintendo nerd gamer friend Zero has a new one. After last week's Nintendo NES themed setup, check out the link in the description, I really dug this thing, and I found out that they had a special edition. And I was like, what's the special edition? It's actually a transparent red version of the Famicom design. If you didn't watch my last video, these are officially licensed Nintendo products, sold only at Nintendo Tokyo in Gacha Gacha coin machines. This is just a D-pad. It's got the membrane, it's got the D-pad, plastic thing. There's a hole here if you want to put a lanyard on it. I've not replaced mine yet because I actually kind of like the color of this gold ball chain with the Famicom aesthetic. It looks great. Got the player one here, the very nice metallic gold foil on the front, transparent red plastic, super hard and thick. Though this is a little bit thinner than the NES version, ever so slightly. They're very close. But just like the real controllers, that's this is the actual thickness. These are Nintendo products. They're exactly how they were in the real full-size controller form. This is just a fun little fidget toy. Put it in your hand, put it in your pocket, get your D-pad action on. I think since it's a D-pad and you usually use your left hand with a D-pad, this is sort of a left-handed fidget toy. Obviously nothing is stopping you from doing it right-handed, but man, your left hand, it just, it knows the D-pad and it wants to know it. I catch myself doing the thumb roll, Street Fighter, Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat type moves. It's, it's awesome. It's really satisfying. And if you're a retro gamer nerd, I think having an official Nintendo fidget toy is something you should look into. So, from Nintendo, the Famicom Special edition d-pad fidget toy for this week's red pouch dump theme in my pocket you will always find a hank or two this is a microfiber backed cotton hank one side's got the microfiber backing in black with some very nice embroidery around the edges and then the cotton print side this particular one is the Overlook Hotel print hank from Mad Pal Clothworks on Etsy Matty Mad Pow is an awesome dude, makes all kinds of cool hanks, and I highly suggest getting one of his two hank sizes. He calls this one the original, and this one the quick deploy, a little bit smaller footprint. Living in Pittsburgh in the wintertime or spring or whatever pothole season it is right now, having a hank is an absolute necessity. And if you have kids, having two hanks is probably more realistic. Throw these things in your left side cargo pocket and you're good to go with dealing with cleaning screens, cleaning phones, cleaning lenses, cleaning snot off yourself, kids, your wife, whoever is around you. Offer a lady a clean hank, never give her a snotty one because that's just gentlemanly. Continuing with our red theme, this is my mechanical keycap fidget toy featuring two sweet artisan keycaps. This is the Pixel Company Alt-F in Zerblasted Titanium. This is the V3 prototype version. And yeah, we got two keycaps right here. Got one pointing up and one pointing down. How cool is that? <laughs> this little shy guy right here is from Sublime Caps. This is the Cough Drop. And then over here, we've got 
the Albumen O Canada from Prime Caps. Check out the detailing in the Albumen face that is inlaid here, as well as some sweet cough drop action from this little shy guy from Sublime Keys. See in here, we've got a spot for where your switches go. I personally have Neapolitan ice cream switches. Very nice tactile switches from Canon Keys. So the idea with the Alt F is it's literally just a fidget toy. It's a clicker. Put this thing in your hand, click away. I collect keyboards and artisan keycaps. Have a lot of nervous energy. So this thing really speaks to me. There's a lot of cool action here. A lot of ways that you can show off your keycap collection if you're into that world. And yeah, these come in a bunch of different styles, metals, colors, anodizing. Pixel Company, check it out, the Alt F. For some more red aesthetic in today's video. After my last episode of video game stuff went so well, I thought I might show off a little other options for you. Here is a cool little pouch that I got from Club Nintendo. Uh, this is the Mario Hat DS case. Unzips part way down here, it's like a stretchy neoprene fabric in the shape of a Mario hat. You can hold a DS or a Game Boy Advance. There's no organization on the inside except for one tiny little DS slot flap thing. You can hold your full size DS. What I really love about the DS is that it's not just dual screen, it's dual system. So anytime that you want, you just take a physical Game Boy Advance cartridge or DS cartridge, stick them in there, and you're playing the game. And we're not talking emulation quality, we're talking about physical hardware console quality, because it's literally both consoles right here. This is an official OEM Nintendo product, so you know it's going to work great out of the box. These carts are readily available, and there's all kinds of amazing Game Boy Advance and DS games. I also should mention this right here. Space Pirate Captain XO wants me to specifically call out the R4DS chip. This is the OG first edition I've had for a super long time. It's exactly like a regular DS cart, but you'll notice up here there is a micro SD card slot holding this tiny little 8 gigabyte SanDisk card has a whole huge library of DS games all on it. You slap this thing in, it boots to a little menu, you pick your game, and then it launches the game. It's very nice to be able to just have a whole ROM library on a device like this that you can just play. Now DS is nice and all, and I love it, but man, I have some serious nostalgia for the Game Boy Advance. Specifically this one, the SP. This guy was my youth, man. I played this thing so much. It's got two really nice shoulder buttons right here, and then just typical Famicom Nintendo style. Two buttons, D-pad, little thing, brightness adjustment for the screen, and then the whole thing just pops down into absolutely nothing. You can see the way that they slot right here in the bottom and are totally flush, unlike the DS where the Game Boy Advance cards sit out a little bit. This thing is a perfect little rectangle. You've got your power button on one side, volume adjustment on the other side, and that's it. This is an iconic video game console that you can get really cheap on eBay. Make sure you pick one that says that it's work tested as working. Yeah, and this is a great console. They also make Flash carts for these. I don't have one because I have so many Game Boy Advance games, but it's definitely worth it if you're getting new into buying retro consoles. Get a flash cart, get a DS or a Game Boy Advance, and start playing real Nintendo games on real Nintendo hardware. If you're concerned about screen real estate, there's really no kind of question here which one is going to give you a bigger, more vibrant screen experience out of these two. I mean, they look better on the DS, they are bigger, the backlight works better. But this thing is great, and the battery life on this is killer compared to this. So, you kind of have to choose. If you're going to be playing Game Boy Advance games, maybe you don't need two screens. Maybe you just need a regular single screen. Also, there are all kinds of IPS panels that you can mod these things with. Back into the Club Mario hat. Let's slide them right in here. Tip that thing up. It's a me! When talking about entertaining yourself, man, nothing beats the classic deck of cards. They don't gotta be casino quality. Any dollar store deck will do. All you need is a couple of friends, and you can play some blackjack, some poker, some euchre. If you're by yourself, you can play some solitaire, you can practice cardistry, some kings in the corner, whenever you want, man. 
A deck of cards can be a great way to just get a random conversation going with a stranger. Get something happening in your conversation. Hey man, you want to play some cards? We're all sitting here at the airport bored out of our minds. You in? Deal them up. So yeah, the old deck of playing cards. Classic EDC gear. Little pocket trash bonus round here. Check out this cool little Ranger Eye holder spray paint can from FTW EDC. Got a little Smash Brothers Toad and a brand new Data Crew Angry Mickey on one side, and then Blackout Reaper Reppin on the back. There's a lanyard hole on the top of the spray paint can. I've got a customized Coke can cap on here with some spray action for the graffiti aesthetic. Does this serve any functional purpose? No. This is pure pocket trash. This is just a lanyard fidget toy. You could put this on your keys, on your wallet, or whatever you want to. Carry it on its own, but it's just a cool little thing to carry your ranger eyes on. It's made out of PVC plastic itself, the same stuff that REs are made out of. So it's about three reese fit. Three reese fit. Say that three times fast. Three reese fit. Three reese fit. Three reese fit. Three reese fit. Anyways, three reese thick. <laughs> So yeah, from FTW EDC, the spray paint can reholder. I know I didn't feature a ton of Data Crew gear this week, but I've got a sweet discount code for you either way. Check out this new sweet graphic. Thanks, Milk. I appreciate you, buddy. 15% off your whole order if you use my code XERO15. So fill your card up with sweet, nostalgic, amazing Ranger Eye action and get a sweet hookup from me to you from the dudes at the Data Crew. I'm going to try my best to put links to all the products I'm going to show off in this video down in the description below. Full disclaimer, these are affiliate links on Amazon and eBay. I get a tiny kickback that helps support the channel so I can buy more pocket trash, patches, knives to show to you in these videos. So check out the links if you want to buy some of these products. I'm sorry I haven't had time to make a lot of videos lately. I'm like three or four weeks behind. The algorithm hates me, so please give me a little extra love on this video. Comment down below what your favorite piece of gear was. But I've just been busy with work. It's not that I don't want to do this channel. It's not that I don't have a pile of new rees over there I want to show you. But I've just been busy with life. And, you know, sometimes those have to take priorities over YouTube, so... It is what it is. Well, that is my blood red aesthetic themed EDC pouch dump for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Click my face up here if you want to subscribe. Click these boxes appearing on my face as I do this outro if you want to watch more videos right now. And if no one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, have some fun, play some old video games, and have yourselves a wonderful day. Later on.